So this is my little uh, solenoid motor. I call it a motor, is it an engine? It's not really an engine, I think it's a motor, an electric motor, a very strange electric motor because it's, uh, it's got a, effectively a, a simple solenoid. If I just flick it to start it, you'll see it operating here. You see the little switch here that operates twice per revolution. And that operates at this point when it just pushes the piston finally out and then at this point when it pushes it the opposite way. Now I'm going to take it apart in a second and we'll see where that force works. Let me just see, just, let me just see it running but then and then underneath I've got a, a small 9 volt battery in the base of the actual engine itself. So let's take it apart and, uh, and see where we get to. If we, first of all, we just take off the, this is effectively the gudgeon pin. So this little bolt in the top here is the gudgeon pin. If I just unscrew that, there you are, it's coming up. There it is. So it's a little brass bolt. Um, you can see it's got a plain, plain section on it, which is good. It means that it runs nice and smoothly. This, then I can pull out the, uh, the connecting rod, and you can see there are tiny little uh, six millimeter internal, ten millimeter outside ball race there. Really simple connecting rod because it's just a piece of, uh, you know, bent wire and uh, a bearing at each end. Very simple. Now you can see that I've got the the armature for the solenoid motor. Now actually. You can see that there's the silver inside. That's actually there's some permanent magnets inside this wooden armature. And if I just put it there and then just I just switch it. Well, there you are. It flicks it out. So if I push it a bit further the other way and then switch it on, it flicks it out the other way. So you can see that effectively if I just pull it out a bit. Let's try that again. So if I pull it to here and then switch it on, it pushes it out. If I push it to here and then excite the coil, it pushes it out the other way. So uh, that's why I've got the the uh, the cam here operates twice per revolution. So when the when the pest when the sol when the when the solenoid um, armature is here, it get, the coil gets excited and this gets pushed this way. Out. When the armature is here and I excite the coil, it gets pushed this way. So I get two operations of this and they're only fleeting just a little look you can see the switch just operates very briefly it just flicks that coil out so let's just try it again so we put the coil there just excite it pushes it out there's not much force and if we do it this way you know, if I just excite it it pushes it out and if I just look at that force when I just feel it it's, it's a it's a little thump but it's not you know it's not a huge amount of force and if I do it this way now look, you can see it, it's a, it's a bit of a thump, but it's not huge. So that, that's, that's how the excitation, that's the, that's the armature. If I just take off this uh, flywheel, so the flywheel just sits here, I'm going to just remove it. This flywheel is just a piece of uh, pewter. Nice and easy to melt. Um, you can melt it into a into, into actually into a piece of wood. You can cast it into a piece of wood. It melts at around about uh, 300 degrees C off the top of my head. I'd have to probably just check that and look it up. But um, six millimeter hole in the centre uh, goes onto that shaft and gets bolted on. And then you can see I've actually got a single bearing. I mean that sounds strange in a in a you know in a in a main big end, but I've got a single bearing. This is not really. There's not much load on this, so it's a single bearing, uh, eight millimeter internal diameter. Outside, I think it's 22. I've got a, uh, a digital caliper. Let's just check that. So let's look at a digital caliper. So let's just switch that on, zero it. Um, let's just check what that bearing size is. That bearing size. Oh, I was very close. It's 22. So it's 22 by. Um, and I think it's uh, this is, this digital caliper is messing up. Looks going very odd. It's starting to play up. I think it's cold. Um, I would say it's eight millimeters wide. So it's, so it's so it's a eight ID, twenty two OD, and then eight millimeter thick bearing. And that, as I said, operates this really simple little little switch here. Yeah. 
Now, and that literally is just running this coil that's in series with this switch and then in series with the battery. And the battery sits just under here. So two little wood screws to remove the battery. And then we just pull this cover off. There you are, there's a, a little nine volt battery. Now there is a there is a switch on here you can have. I've I've bridged that switch um, with some with a with a piece of wire um, because actually it's easy just to put the, the motor in the right place and it and it doesn't draw any current and it doesn't doesn't come on. So let's put the cover back on here. Let's put the cover back on. Um, that's back in there. Let's screw that back on so it's nice and secure. That's on there. No, that's on there. Now, as I said, the flywheel goes back on, so the flywheel just goes back on there. And we'll tighten that up. Let's put that on. The little brass nut that I made that goes on the end. It's a, it's a six millimeter. Um, bolt and an M6 thread on there, so it's an M6 thread. Just tighten that up. And then we put the armature back in. Just check that we've got the countersink on that for the screw, that side, that's good. And then this little con rod goes on. And then we're, we'll put the gudgeon pin. It's a gudgeon bolt, I think, it'll be better, perhaps a description. That we just bolt back in there, and, just, and it operates, and it will run like that all day, happily run all day on that on that little battery. You know, a very simple solenoid motor. Plans available on Glit.com.